So I, I shouldn't discuss any of the other people who might or might not uh, come forward. Um, you know, I mean, it's been publicly stated that there are other individuals who uh, do want to come forward at the right time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I know uh, that David will be there. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I think the audience listening should know that, um, you know, the David will be under oath. Uh, and so the things that he's saying are, you know, he is at peril. Uh, to so he's not going to be there to say things that he could basically end up in jail for. So you know, David is walking a very fine line. Sure. Uh, on the one hand, he can't talk about things that he doesn't have uh, authority to reveal. On the other hand, he can't lie in what it is that he does talk about. So he's basically walking a gangplank uh, here. Uh, so what um, you know, and, and I know Dave, you know, now quite well. What benefit to him is there to not talk about what he knows? So, you know, I think it's, again, it comes back to this legacy of trust. Yeah. David trusts the people that he heard from. He has no reason to doubt them. So that custody, that chain of custody of trust is going up to, to David. He's going to now tell his story uh, under oath, under a cloak of trust or believability. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, and then hopefully Congress will, will act on it appropriately. So, you know, I think you're going to, you're going to see, uh, a little bit more of, of David in the coming, uh, weeks, um, after the, after the hearing. Um, and I think the world should be excited because he's opening the door for others now.